All right, guys, we're back in my RV again because I'm going to be doing a quick repair over at one of my dealers with an issue that might be a little bit more common on RVs than I think I was aware of. Now, it's not just an excuse to show you the condition of the wood in my RV because it is beautiful. It is all natural cherry wood, solid wood. Can you see in this pocket door the wood that's down in there? So there's a solid wood door. And yes, I know Beaver wasn't the only one to use solid wood and they're still used in lots of luxury high-end coaches today. And uh, I usually try to point them out in videos if it has solid wood or engineered lumber on it. Normally the doors will be solid wood, but the cabinet faces on lower end RVs will be engineered lumber or fake wood. While solid wood is beautiful, uh, en engineered lumber has two advantages. One is that it's very stable and not prone to expansion or contraction and cracking. And the other one would be that it's exceptionally strong for its weight. So why am I talking about lumber and wood in an RV video? It's because most RVs like this one are made in very humid environments. Like uh, this was made in the uh, coast of Oregon in the Pacific Northwest, where I'm told it has moisture. Uh, the big spot is going to be in Indiana and Indiana does notoriously have moisture. And even in places like Red Bay, Alabama, where Tiffin's made, it's exceptionally moist there. So the wood that's being made for all that cabinetry has a very high moisture content. So when new units come in from any of those places and get delivered to uh, exceptionally dry climates like Arizona, it's not uncommon for these raised cabinet doors to have a almost a quarter inch gap right here where the wood's unfinished because the panel actually shrunk that much. And even if you don't live in a dry climate, if you do put an RV into storage for a prolonged period of time, it can actually dry out quite a bit. Now some keen viewers on my last few Beaver RV videos might have noticed a bucket in the shower. What's not too uncommon that you might see in some RV years, especially in Arizona, if they put them into storage, is a bucket of water in the shower to help add some moisture to the air. If you're living in the RV, that's not a big deal because you're taking showers, you're cooking, you're breathing, and putting a lot of moisture back into the air. How effective this bucket of water is, I don't really know for sure, but it is something that we do recommend to RVers, especially here in Arizona. But today I'm going to drive across town to Integrity RV. They have a newer Tiffin Phaeton that has a uh, an opening issue on their bathroom door that I think is related to shrinkage in the wood. So that's why I'm pointing this out. And this is a 2015 Tiffin Phaeton. We go inside. Uh, master on. First off, oh, what a gorgeous coach. But this is why we're over here. Because of this bathroom door right here. Uh, it goes past the stop on the jam. So this door and wood shrunk up a little bit because the wood's dried up. Let's take a measure out on it. So this side screwed down with the hinges and this side has opened up. It looks to be about a quarter inch if we need to close that off at least, right? So what we're gonna do first is take off this trim on this side. Tiffin makes it pretty nice for us because besides the strike plate right there, there's just screws holding it in. There's four of them total, I think. Uh, so there's no nails or anything or staples we have to pull out for this. And this is solid wood too. Now I have just shimmed the striker plate before, usually with washers. It's not the best, almost attractive repair. And this gap's a lot more than a washer's going to handle. But like I said, Tiffins are made in Red Bay, Alabama. If you can see that line right there, that's how much this panel has shrunk on both sides. You usually won't shrink uh, height-wise, just to with the grain it open and close. I'm not a woodsmith or a carpenter. But these are the things that I'm told by smart people. And although I'm not from the South, I hear that Alabama and the uh, South is a generally humid area. Now, I'm pretty intimately familiar with this door jam molding or trim that Tiffin makes. In fact, the uh, red that I rebuilt I had to replace this stuff and I reuse this for something else. But there's a nice channel on it, so there's a rabbit all the way down around the wall itself. So the uh, opening itself didn't shift, it's just the wood. So it's still screwed on the ceiling where it was at the factory. So we just need to make some shims that will fit into this lip right here. That way we can shim it out against the opening a little bit and we'll probably do two, two, uh, two shims 
to bring it out as much as we can because we don't want to have the shims exposed because we can see how deep this pocket is we can pull it out almost to that point there and then once it goes any further it'll be exposed if uh, those shims aren't enough that means I can take the door off this side add some shims to that side and then it'll even it out and narrow up the uh, doping so I'm just gonna head down the street real fast to make some shims and I'll be right back now if you're at a shop and you have a whole bunch of this lying around these little batten strips or you, these little decor batten strips you can use these as shims I've used those quite a bit but if you don't I normally just get a piece of paneling eighth inch glue on now about three quarter inches of width of the uh, the wall but I don't want it to be tight against that molding so I'll go a little bit narrower about a little over half an inch <laughs> So this was just eighth inch thick Luon paneling. Same stuff I usually use on the side walls and roofs. And underlayment, very common piece on an RV. A lot of times it'll have a sticker on one side or a vinyl wallpaper. So that's what the, the inside walls usually look like. Now I'm pretty sure I made way more than I needed. But the guys at Cassone's RV let me borrow their table saw and I'd rather not have to make, come back and make a second trip. I didn't have enough, so I should have enough. The kind of the nice thing about the shims I made is that you can use you can use metal tools to trim it. And the other nice thing about shims is I don't really have to be perfect with them. I just have to kind of put them in place and then nail them up. Okay, I think that's going to be what I want to do with two layers. Two is usually what I found to be the limit. Alright, let's see how our test fit goes. Yeah, so we're still pretty far off. And if I were to just pull this back a little bit, it would expose that. So I will have to add shims to this side too. But these are real hinges, so I can actually just knock those out. <laughs> now I get the door out of the way. Just put it off to the side for now. I'll take the hinges off and that jam trim off. This is three quarter inch plywood with a uh, cherry veneer on it. Kind of see that veneer layer right there. So I just great. need to grab my shims and then do the same thing on this side. Okay, let's see how we did here. Well, that looks pretty freaking good. If anything, I have to push on the door pretty hard in order for it to latch. So I could theoretically move this back a little bit, but I don't know if I want to finesse it that much. Having a tension on it on the stop should keep the door from actually rattling down the road. So I know it wasn't much of a video to show you guys uh, how to shim a jam opening. Uh, it's pretty basic home improvement stuff, but I thought it was a good illustration of how, how much wood can expand and contract in these. So we added two shims to one side, two shims to the other side, basically. So that's a quarter, those are eighth inch shims. So it's a quarter inch on one side, quarter inch on the other side. That's a half inch total. That's a lot of movement in the wood. So that would have been the main reason why I wanted to do this video, just to show you that uh, this natural wood it has its beauty and charm, but it does require maintenance, including moisture. Now, some people might not be in a desert and they don't have to worry about that, adding moisture. A lot of people will be in more moist environments where they have to get moisture out of the air because so, their door openings are too, too narrow. So in that case, you get like damp rid or some desiccant to put in the coach to dry the coach out in storage. But that was pretty much it. This is a 2015 Phaeton from Tiffin. It's got quite a lot of features to it. It's not ready to show, so I can't do a walkthrough on you yet because you see stuff like that, but I'll give you a quick little glimpse of it. And what I discovered was that it has a 10,000 watt generator on it, which is odd because it only has two ACs, but it does have heated flooring. And here's that bathroom everybody wanted to see, I'm sure. 
with the shower. It's got a single handle shower though. It's nice. Even has the skylight cover that I like. I'll give you a quick glimpse on the outside of it and we'll go around it. Let's see if I got told good information or bad information. Hmm, 10,000 watt. Four slide outs. It's a nice, nice floor plan. I like it. It's a good color. Looks really good. Now, although this can happen on any of the RV manufacturers, it's most common on Tiffin and Winnebago. I don't know if it's just uh, Iowa and Alabama are just a lot more moist than Indiana or Oregon. That's all I can come up with. Well, that was it, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Thank you to the crew over at Cassone's RV for letting me borrow their table saw and a piece of paneling. And, and uh, you know, take care of the wood in your RV. It's a living thing. You got to take care of it. And yes, guys, this Milwaukee Brad Nailer, battery-powered one, really worked really well, even on longer brads. It's a new world we're living in. Engineered lumber does have one advantage, is that it's a very stable, stable. Engineered lumber is, so the wood here does come in. So the wood. Now, some keen viewers on my last few RV, uh, on my last, <coughs> when they're building cabinetry there, the, the moisture content's pretty high, even if it's kiln drying, because it's going to be made in a factory full of moisture. Uh, like this paneling right here. Uh, a lot of times they'll have a sticker on one side. Not too much. You all right? I'm good. Thanks, Scott. Hey, How are you doing? Not bad. <laughs>